They bring up Dionysus. December 25th is of no relevance, and there seems to be no evidence Dionysus was born on December 25th in any scholarly literature. In fact, Freak and Gandhi note that his birth was celebrated on January 6th by some in Alexandria. Sometimes Dionysus is associated with the annual return of spring. As for the virgin birth, there's two versions, none of which constitute as a virgin birth. As Dr. Edwin Yamauchi proclaims, quote, There's no evidence of a virgin birth for Dionysus. As the story goes, Zeus disguised himself as a human, fell in love with the princess Samel, the daughter of Cadmus, and she became pregnant. Hera, who was Zeus's queen, arranged to have her burned to a crisp, but Zeus rescued the fetus and sewed him into his thigh until Dionysus was born. So this is not a virgin birth in any sense, unquote. As the Encyclopedia Mythica notes in that version, quote, Zeus slept with Samel, unquote. No virgin birth. Another tale reads, Dionysus is the product of Zeus and Persephone. Hera becomes insanely jealous and tries to destroy the infant by sending the Titans to kill him. Zeus comes to the rescue, but it's too late. The Titans had eaten everything but Dionysus' heart. Zeus then takes the heart and implants it into the womb of Samel. As we can see, no virgin birth takes place, but this is how Dionysus is said to have become a rebirth deity, as is twice born in the womb. So Zeus mated with his daughter Persephone, who bore a son, Sagrius, which is another name for Dionysus. As we can see, there is no virgin birth here. More illogic from Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist says, quote, he was a traveling teacher. Well, the story does have Dionysus traveling around Arabia, Persia, and Greece spreading his rights and delivering judgments as needed on those who defend reports that there are versions of Dionysus which have him traveling the world, including an expedition to India. Dionysus is sometimes referred to as the most epidemic of gods, for he was the god who spent the most time traveling. This is nothing like Jesus traveling a limited area providing moral teachings, but at any rate, there would be no other way to spread the word unless he wanted to travel or else sent disciples around, which Jesus did do, but Dionysus did not. He was never believed to be a spiritual teacher like Jesus. This parallel is very weak. Jesus' miracles were healings and such, all positive miracles. Dionysus' miracles were judgments against those who defied him. Zeitgeist claims, quote, he performed miracles such as turning water into wine, unquote. Though there are tales where Dionysus supernaturally fills empty vessels with wine, the act of turning water into wine does not occur. The motif of changing water to wine is not presented in the Dionysus legends. The jugs of Alice, for example, were not filled with water, but were empty, and the fount of wine in Andros did not replace one of water. From these references, it is obvious that there are significant differences between Dionysus' legend and the story of John II. As Dr. Donald A. Carson remarks, quote, Older attempts to interpret this sign as a Christianized version of the Dionysus myth or of related stories have largely been abandoned in the light of evidence that the alleged parallels are wholly inadequate." Unquote. So I hope you all understand that when Zeitgeist claims Dionysus turned water into wine, that's just a flat out lie. They claim he was referred to the quote unquote King of Kings, Alpha and Omega, God's only begotten Son, etc. In Graves' World 16 Crucified Saviors, Chapter 9, uh, Titles of Saviors, he doesn't even mention Dionysus once as having any similar title with Jesus. I went to Acharya's book, The Christ Conspiracy, which is basically just a rip-off of Graves' work for the most part, and found that she says, He was called King of Kings and God of Gods, but only considered the Alpha and Omega and only begotten Son. She provides no source for these titles, nor explains why Dionysus was called such things when the story doesn't even suit him. For example, King of Kings? Dionysus was only semi-deity. Zeus was the head god according to mythology, so he wasn't King of Kings. Only begotten son? Zeus had many relationships with women, where he fathered several children. Alpha and Omega? Dionysus had a distinct beginning to his existence. It seems Acharya is not qualified to write on the subject and needs to cite more sources. As for the resurrection claim, in terms of rising from the dead there have been a variety of ideas. One, a single inscription from Thassos that describes Dionysus as a god who renews himself and returns every year rejuvenated, whatever that means. We have no context with which to refer it. A story that Dionysus was chased and persecuted and then descends to the depths of the Aklonian Sea and to the land of the dead also the heart rejuvenated above, which in another version has the heart placed in a body made of gypsum. In one version, which has Dionysus as son of Demeter, 
His mom resembles the pieces and makes Dionysus young again, which is an eccentric minority variant, not a resurrection. In others, it's simply said that Zeus raised him up as he lay mortally wounded, or that Zeus swallowed the heart of Dionysus and then begat him afresh by Samel, or the heart was pounded up and given in a potion to Samel, who thereby conceived him. With such a variety of options, it may be no surprise that at least one variant bears a superficial resemblance to what happened to Jesus, rising from the dead and ascending to heaven. This merely displays mere pattern searching and in no way proves causation. Taken together with all the debunked information, if this is all they have, it no way proves causation. One must simply use logic. The resurrection account of Dionysus stems from the tale of him being reborn after his attack by the Titans. As we can see, this has nothing to do with the resurrection story of Jesus. Furthermore, we are told after Dionysus completes teaching his followers his religious rites, he ascends to Mount Olympus to be with the other deities, alive and well. His infant rebirth like Attis is symbolic of the vegetation cycle, not atoning for sin. Is there even any evidence that these supposed resurrection ideas predate Christianity? Let's listen to Dr. Gary Habermas' dialogue with the Zeitgeist defender named Tim Callahan of Skeptic Magazine. I want to say, where's the evidence? Well, I would say that, first of all, that the myth of Dionysus probably does uh, antedate Jesus. And yes, well, there isn't specifically resurrection, uh, specifically, I'm using crucifixion, uh, but I don't see that that's really uh, that important a point. Uh, that they all undergo a horrible, excruciating death. You're going to have to give me a, a, a date for the earliest inscription because Dionysus, I don't know anybody who thinks Dionysus is pre-Christian, not the resurrection portion. Okay, well, uh, all I can tell you is that the myth is that he uh, is torn apart by the Titans, uh, eaten, and he is uh, raised from the dead. Uh, what is, is the a, date? I don't, what know is the date I don't know the date of the, as I said, of the original... Um, uh, as far as any writings we have, but I know that the, with, with the myths, the, the Greek myths, most of our Greek myths, uh, we do have from later collections, except we know they are from, they were told earlier because we have the vase paintings depicting them going way back in time. But the point, the question is, is there a resurrection? And since we don't have any resurrection predating the second century, all the way to the fourth century are the earliest ones, second to fourth. We can say, well, maybe there's a resurrection there, but there's no data. There's absolutely no evidence for that position. Dionysus was not a savior to which if you followed him, you would get eternal life. As the French scholar André Belanger concludes, quote, The conception that the God dies and is resurrected in order to lead his faithful to eternal life is represented in no Hellenistic mystery or religion, unquote. As we have just heard, the skeptic Tim Callahan admits there's no crucifixion with Dionysus, so what about the picture of the amulet of Dionysus that Zeitgeist shows when introducing him and that freaking Gandhi have on their book cover? The amulet dates centuries after the gospel and may even be a forgery. James Hannum conducted research on the amulet. He writes, quote, The first source freaking Gandhi supplied was R. Eisler, Orpheus the Fisher, first published in 1920, and where the 4th century date for the amulet is given, and it is illustrated. The second reference was W.K.C. Guthrie, Orpheus and Greek Religion, Princeton University Press, 1952. This is the second edition and discusses the amulet at some length on page 265. He mentions the views of Eisler and Otto Kern, who was a very distinguished German expert on the Orpheus. At the time, both considered the gem to be an ancient Orpheic artifact, and Eisler suggested there was a tradition of a crucified Orpheus, pointing to the evidence of Justin Martyr, who denies there was ever a crucified pagan. Guthrie rightly rejects this interpretation, but there's a final kicker to this story that Freak failed to mention. I found an endnote to the 1952 edition of Guthrie's work, page 278, which states, In his review of the book Orpheus in Greek Religion, Kern Rakanson expresses himself, convinced by the expert opinion of Rael and Zan, that the gem is a forgery. The gem has been branded a forgery by noted experts. Luckily for Freak and Gandhi, that they don't think the gem is important to their thesis. But you still have to ask, what is it doing on the front cover of their book? And one can also have suspicions as to why they didn't give a reference to where the picture came from, unquote. This just displays the dishonesty of Zeitgeist, Freak and Gandhi, and how inadequate their research abilities are. Anything to make a few dollars, I guess. <laughs>